Hello and welcome to the Kalispell Warhawks Dynasty. My name is Mr. Hurricane. Today, Mountain West Conference play is underway for Kalispell. They host UNLV as Kalispell has finished their first ever undefeated non-conference slate. They are 3-0, UNLV 3-1. The title defense for Kalispell begins now. They were dominant last year in Mountain West play. It was a down year for the conference, and we'll see how they do now that everybody's going to be chasing them. And off we go, week six is underway as the sun sets in Kalispell. Nine yards deep, that's no problem. Ja'Cory Day takes it out, and he's taken down after a poor return. Actually, poor blocking more so. Kalispell begins at the 15-yard line, and they'll go to the read option. Nice spin here from Marquise Walker as he picks up five yards. Kalispell played very well last week in their 24-14 victory against Louisiana Monroe. Swing pass here to Sheridan, and he's bowling over Rebel defenders on his way to a first down. Great way to get going here for Roscoe Sheridan. Everybody wants to see him carry the football more this year and have a bigger role in the offense. Plays like that will make it happen. Walker now to the air. Rashad Williams has this reception. Gain of three. Definitely a less aggressive passing day last week for Kalispell. Trying to play more to Marquise Walker's strengths. As this will actually lose some yardage. And the Warhawks will punt. UNLV takes over with senior quarterback Armani Rogers leading the way. He had three touchdown passes last week and has this offense 25th in scoring per game. Handoff now to Williams, who takes it off tackle. Tackled by Zach Flowers. Kalispell shifting their defense. Everybody up close. Rogers down the middle to Moss. He'll be wrapped up on the play, but has first down yardage, 13. Out to the 40-yard line now and opening things up. Rogers looks to run. Up the middle he goes. First down and more. Tumbling down after a 14-yard scramble. Staying empty on first down now in Kalispell territory. Big lob. And there's Williams on the reception. Bumped out by Malcolm Neal. Secondary playing a bit off here on first down. It's Williams who's met immediately. Nice physical stop by Kelly John Charles. Single high look now on second down. Dump off to Haynes. And a good open field tackle from free safety Jay Page. Warhawks trying to leave the field in a cover three shell. Rogers scrambling, and John Charles lets him get outside. Up inside the 10 yard line and sliding down. Goal to go, UNLV. Very impressive start for the Rebels. Rogers on first and goal completes the pass to Sims. Touchdown, UNLV. Rogers was 5 of 5 in the air and showed good running ability. This may be Kalispell's toughest test yet. Warhawks take over on offense. They open things up in the passing game as Walker looks to scramble out. Nobody's open. He'll have to keep this and just pick up one yard as he's brought down along the sideline. Third down and nine. Just a three-man rush. And Walker sends it downfield. He connects with Sonny Archer. That was maybe the last possible moment. And thankfully, it was only a three-man rush. It gave Archer plenty of time to find the soft spots. Two tight ends on the field now as they sweep and cutting back up the middle. Roscoe Sheridan gets downhill for nine yards. Jones to the right, Day out left. Here's second and one, Walker to an open, Donnie Castillo, who is brought down inside the 40-yard line of UNLV. Calispo looking to match UNLV's score as Roscoe Sheridan has nowhere to go. Plenty of Rebel defenders in the area. Three wide now in the game. Walker from the pocket and wide open on the outside. There's the senior, Troy Evans, for 17 yards. Much crisper drive this time around as Day takes the jet sweep and he gets rocked after a short gain. Same personnel, Day stays in the ball game, getting seven. Pressure off right edge and down goes Marquise Walker. UNLV doing a good job with the pass rush here early. And they can send more of it here, third and 13. Walker off the mark and he's nearly intercepted by Austri. He was overthrowing Ja'Cory Day who may have had a chance with a better pass. 
So a 10 play drive for Kalispell, they send out Calvin Rowe. And the senior kicker knocks it through, 7-3 UNLV. Rebels ball as the first quarter is coming to an end. Rodgers barely gets this out to Williams. Kind of a risky call as it gets them a few extra yards. Everybody up close here on first down. And Williams gets some daylight before he's brought down by John Charles. Now on second down and two, Rodgers short this time. Haynes has the reception as he beats Zach Flowers. Six yards. Kalispa going with a lot of 3-3-5 early, keeping three safeties on the field as Stevenson gets a great release from Davenport and picks up 16. They're keeping Kelly John Charles on the field a lot more than they have early in the year. Now Rodgers scrambling again. There's a first down, weaving his way through the defense. Already 87 rushing yards for UNLV. Definitely a concern. And second and goal, Rodgers wants to run again, but he'll be taken down instead. Fighting through, that's TJ Strong, who continues to impress. Can they lock down the red zone on third and goal? Screen out for Williams, inside the 10. Sheds a tackle, but there's Otis Frazier. Brought down at the one, and the Rebels will kick. 10-3, as UNLV has put together two solid possessions. And Kalispell will take over now as Day takes it out of the end zone. Hurdles over a defender. Races across the 40. Good field position. And you got to love the hurdle here from Ja'Cory Day. We have Ja'Cory doing some track and field. Roscoe Sheridan playing some bowling. It's an interesting night. Now Walker opens up with a little play fake and finds Ja'Cory Day after a 50-yard return. He's back and ready for an 11-yard catch. That conditioning work is paying off. Now a give to Sheridan, and he never saw number 15. That was a huge hit. Down to third and four. Walker gets it out quick, but Jones can't bring it in. Amante Jones has been sure-handed early this season, but unable to make this catch. So they bring out the punter, the true freshman Jeff Childs. They'll try to pin him deep, and it bounces out of bounds at the one-yard line. I've never heard fans cheer so loudly for a punt, but it was worth it. First and 10 from the one, and Williams brought down, that's a safety! Malcolm Neal on the blitz, as Williams was slowed up by James Watson. Supreme teamwork there from Kalispell, it's 10 to five. We have this awkward baseball score now, as Troy Evans handles the return, and the Warhawks will take over on offense. They do have two recruits in attendance today, quarterback Justin Colbert from Polson, Montana, and the running back Reno Springs from Spokane, Washington. Nice run there by Sheridan, now second and short. They'll go option now, Walker, trying to follow his offensive lineman, he gets seven. Three receivers now in the game, Day moves inside to the slot. Walker with protection, off the hands of Ja'Cory Day. This is a textbook example of hearing footsteps. Day wants no part of that safety in the incoming hit. Third and 11 for Kalispell. Again, they open things up. Good pocket here, and wide open down the field, Sonny Archer inside the 20 for 35. They run a switch concept on the outside, and this can give you big plays down the field if the defense isn't ready. Here we go, Kalispell in the red zone, Roscoe Sheridan, not much here. Good play after a two yard run. Jones the motion man, they have two tight ends. Uh oh, Vic Huff got beat and that is trouble for Marquise Walker. No chance, Howard Shelton brings him down. Third down and 16, Corey Miller checks in. Again pressure and Walker has to take another sack. The pocket passing today is really hit or miss as Kalispell will have to settle for another field goal. They have Calvin Rowe, and he sends this through to make it 10 to eight. Kalispell still trailing, but they chip away as UNLV begins a two minute drill, and there's Armani Rogers scrambling outside the numbers and gaining 11 yards. I guess it's somewhat good practice for their matchup next week against New Mexico as Williams hesitates and that'll cost him. He loses one thanks to Elgin McCormick. Here's that spread look again, second and 11. Rodgers to the outside, Moss able to stay in bounds and puts his head down to dive for the first down. Nice play. 
Flowers goes out to cover Moss. It's first and 10, and everybody's covered, and that means Rodgers is going down. James Watson on the sack. Second and 15 with a stack on the left side. Rodgers to Haynes. He gets across the 50 and brought down. Third down now for UNLV. Rebels need five, and Rodgers gives it to Williams, and look at Otis Frazier. That's the kind of play you expect from the captain of the defense. Fantastic pursuit and aggression. Kalispell still trails by two. Maybe they can change that before the half. Walker on the keeper, getting the first down. Doesn't mind the contact as long as he gets that first down yardage. 48 seconds left, one timeout for Kalispell. Short throw here, Jacory Day spinning his way forward. I'm not sure that was really productive. Still a first down for Kalispell. They want a screen now. Sheridan gets a block. He'll break to the sideline, and he'll fight his way for first down yardage. I love the determination from this team. 34 seconds left, and the pocket collapses around Marquise Walker. Couldn't step up into it or escape on either side. And that kind of thing can snowball here once again to long down and distance. Walker barely gets this away, and it's nearly intercepted by White near the sideline. Third and 17. Maybe another deep ball incoming. Walker, better pocket, going deep for Jones, and he can't bring it in. Walker threw a perfect pass. Jones had to go through his hands. Check this out again. Plays we'd hope Jones could make. So that's going to take us to halftime. Kalispell can't find the end zone, but they only trail by two. It has definitely been a tougher day for Kalispell as UNLV has shown good potential on offense and the pass rush has been really hard for Kalispell to deal with. They have one play go wrong and all of a sudden now they're playing long down and distance, no longer playing to their strengths. We'll see if they can adapt well in this second half as the Rebels open up with possession. Charles Williams gains 11. I've been very impressed by Armani Rogers as a passer and as a runner in this game. Here he finds Moss, but he has to retreat to get the football and only gets a few. Again, this spread look here, I get very worried when they go to this as Rogers finds Morse and Kalispell makes the tackle. No first down, they get the stop. They open up the half with two tight ends, Roscoe Sherrod in the back. Didn't see the football a ton in the first half, gets it here, but UNLV's run defense has been pretty solid. They go three wide now and head back to the air. Walker gets it away in time to Ja'Cory Day, who's been more involved today on the offensive side. I think you'd see a lot of that if they go more quick hit and try to get runs after catch. Here is Sheridan again, but this time gets a good push on that left side. Nine yard gain. Sheridan under four yards a carry so far as he gets carry number 10 and spins his way forward to get four. Those are the plays that make Sheridan stand out. The fact that a play looks over, but he still gets a few more. Now Corey Miller on the carry. Oh, look at the power. Never seen this before from Corey. He'd like to get some more snaps and he might after that one. Give here to Roscoe Sheridan. Miller is on the field as they went split back, and how about Roscoe powering ahead for nine? This team is actually built quite well for the ground and pound run game. Now they go to the air on second and short for Don Castillo, getting nine yards. We've seen a lot more twin tight end looks today, a lot of options Kalispell likes to run, and also just with the running game in general as Walker can't spin out the defender. They go backwards a bit. Now we'll see if they can recover. It's third down and nine. Walker with a strike. Sonny Archer is shoved out with a first in goal pickup of 16 yards. Kalispell back in the red zone for the second time. Sheridan carries. Met and a good tackle is made at the five yard line. They stay in the ace formation, but now Corey Miller enters. He gets the call. Shakes off a tackle. Touchdown, Kalispell. Corey Miller's first career touchdown. And it comes before Sheridan has scored a touchdown at all this season. We've been waiting to see him find the end zone. Kalispell though, still in front. They're going for two. And Walker brought down as Donnie Castillo is getting open. 
So now we've seen Kalispell Spell come back from being down 10-3. 11 points unanswered. And we'll see how UNLV responds. Here's Rogers to Haynes. And this will not quite get the first down. A chance for Kalispell to take it right back again. Third and inches. But Williams picks it up with ease. Great push up front on that left side. Following a nine yard run, first and 10. Rogers gets this out quick, he had to. And finds Stevenson for a dozen. Finding themselves again inside Kalispell territory. Rogers wants to scramble. Looks like he has the first down yardage and he will be brought down at the 33. Kalispell has to keep crowding the line, anticipating potential runs. Rogers now can't get away cleanly as he's brought down after a gain of two. And Rodgers is shaken up on the play. He's taken a lot of contact on those runs today, and he'll have to exit as senior Dalton Sneed enters the game. Eight to go, and they gave him great protection as he finds Moss for a first. Now, if Rodgers can't return, I think they're still in good hands with Dalton Sneed, who's a senior, plenty of experience, and he's got a good arm. Maybe not as much of a running threat. To give it off to Williams this time as he gets out to the left side and gets very good yardage here, gain of nine. Third down and one for the Rebels. They'll run it again. Williams again targeting that left side of the defense. Six yards. First down and goal, Rebels looking to retake the lead. Snead dumps it off and Williams gets them down to the two yard line. And coming back into the game, Armani Rogers back in at quarterback. Throwing on second down, hesitating, and that'll cost him. He sacked. Not sure if he was second guessing a run there after getting hurt earlier, but now it'll be third and goal UNLV as this is taken into the fourth quarter. Very good game here in the conference opener. From the five, third and goal. Kalispell sends four. Rogers with nobody open. Has plenty of room to take off and get the touchdown. UNLV back in front. Kalispell just can't get any push. Look at the lane open up for Rodgers and no one home for Kalispell. UNLV back in front. It has been a very good game. UNLV more efficient with their offensive snaps. Kalispell now trailing by three. Walker fires outside. Amante Jones first down. Now they change things up, day in motion. And here's the triple option look. Out to the right, flip to Sheridan. Tripping his way ahead, gain of nine. Now a third and inches for Kalispell. They go to their two tight end package. And Roscoe Sheridan has no problem, gain of five. Definitely relying more on the ground game in this half. Miller checks in, play fake. Walker scrambles out, lobbing for Donny Castillo. Great call by Kalispell. They run the ball a few times and then bust out play action and let Donny separate. Love the call there in the sequence of plays. Now they are in scoring range. Sheridan on the dive, getting two. Back to the shotgun, Ja'Cory Day slot right with three receivers. Walker gets it out quick. Amante Jones hauls this in for another first down. Williams and Castillo paired up on the left side. As they run a screen out to the right, Roscoe Sheridan finally finds the end zone. Another good call here from Kalispell, a very easy score. Roscoe's first touchdown of the season. He might put up big yardage this year, but if he's going to get the touchdowns, he's got to make up for lost time. Kalispell back in front, 21 to 17, as Williams sheds a tackle but still can't pass the line of scrimmage. Now the Warhawk fans getting loud as the defense tries to get a stop. Williams to the outside, gets around one and brought down by Zach Flowers. Now for one of the game's biggest plays, third and five, here's the blitz from Kalispell. Rogers scrambles and he sacks! It's defensive tackle Eugene Howell as Kalispell dials up a very effective rush. And they'll get this football. Punt sent deep to Ja'Cory Day. From the 25, he handles this, makes a move out to the left side, and is brought down after a solid return. Now Kalispell will likely rely on Roscoe Sheridan to drain this clock. On the carry, Roscoe Sheridan, good run here. They go six yards to the right side. Again from the shotgun. 
This time it's option. Walker gets a block. Doesn't mind the contact. Thrown down but has first down yardage. UNLV will have to start using timeouts. Give Sheridan. Trying to go straight through the middle. And they finally bring him to the ground. Two timeouts left for the Rebels. With 2.16 left, Roscoe Sheridan gets the first down as the Warhawks are inside the 30 of UNLV. One timeout left for the Rebels. Another dive. This time, they close in, and Sheridan gets three. A first down will end the game. Another handoff. Roscoe Sheridan fights ahead, and that makes it third and four. With a stop, the Rebels will have a chance. Another give to Sheridan. He goes right up the middle, and Kalispell gets the first down. Great effort by Roscoe Sheridan as he reaches 100 yards on the day and seals a Kalispell victory. They remain undefeated. For the first time, the Kalispell Warhawks are 4-0, and they'll take that record into a big conference clash next week against New Mexico. Roscoe Sheridan, your player of the game with 130 total yards and his first touchdown of the season. It was a very clean game with no turnovers, but Kalispell's offensive line did struggle. They were able to adapt and rely a lot more on Roscoe Sheridan and quick passes. And once again, the defense, they find a way to keep their opponent from scoring. That's three games in a row they've allowed 17 points or less. And that's a good winning formula, especially for an offense that hasn't always put up the big plays or the big numbers this season. Kalispell still undefeated. And now let's talk recruiting. There's a lot to get around to in this episode. Many players made their decisions this week, including two key quarterback prospects. Hometown quarterback Sidney John Charles did not decide to stay in Kalispell. He will be heading out to the University of Minnesota. He will not follow his brother Kelly to the Warhawks, instead electing to play in a bigger conference for a team that has more tradition and maybe a chance to go pro. But there's still good news for Kalispell as Justin Colbert from Polson, Montana, about 50 miles south after visiting this week, has committed to the Warhawks. He was one of the best recruiting surprises out there, way better than expected. He's a pocket passer, and that means the future of this offense is likely going to be more structured vertical passing, and maybe the Marquise Walker era will end a lot of the option stuff that we see. Kirk Norfolk chose Wyoming, and this shocked me. I can't believe that he chose the Cowboys especially so quickly. Landon Shanky will go to Oklahoma, and Skylar Bloomquist to Pitt. We are also targeting another quarterback, Justin Colbert's backup down at Polson, Rashawn Phillips, who's another pocket passer. He is not as talented as Colbert, but there's a chance he could back up Colbert at high school and here in Kalispell. This leaves Brett Mitchell as maybe the only dual threat quarterback on the team next year. So here's a look at the updated board as Luke Young goes to the very top of the list. We are trying to be very aggressive in this recruiting battle, but Washington State wants him, along with Reno Springs, who just visited us during today's game. The visit went very well, and we're much closer now in the battle. He won't visit Washington State for seven more weeks. There's a chance for us to gain some ground in that race. For Chad Moore, Colorado is in the lead, and we're trying to get very aggressive. Xavier Bozeman were actually in first for this race, along with Oscar Bryant and Titus Graves. I expect Graves to commit soon. Donald Pollard, we are in first place. Mike Hill is very close to his decision. Stevie Kendrick, first place. And we're trying to get there with Freddie Kimbrough. Oscar Williams might be the next Kalispell commit. We found a few more recruits this week. Running back Kyle Thomas from Illinois is very intriguing. He's a four-star running back, only 5'10", 170. Kind of a return man and speedy back, although he's not as dynamic as you'd think when you hear scat back. We are also now recruiting an outside linebacker from Indiana, Kevin Fox. He is a coverage linebacker. Good speed, great acceleration, definitely concerned about his agility, but I think that there's a lot of potential with his skill set to become more than just a coverage linebacker. 
Jonathan Starks has definitely improved as a defensive coordinator. We're going to work on getting coverage up for this team and shoring up our man coverage so we can be a little bit more versatile on defense. Up next, we take on New Mexico. Two undefeateds enter, one will leave with their first loss. New Mexico was not as good last year as they were in the first couple years of Kalispell football. Well, they're back. They rush for over 350 yards a game, and they look to be as good as they were a couple years ago. They are blowing teams out, and it's very good we capitalized on a down year for them last season. They were just a 6-7 team after back-to-back 10-win -back years. They might be back to being a 10-win team this season. I think our conference as a whole is definitely better than they were a year ago. Running back Mike Majette ran for over 1,600 last year. He's already surpassed his touchdown total from a year before. He runs with good power, very balanced skill set. Then there's Jawan Lawson, who doesn't really seem to have a weakness. Very good passer, 11 touchdowns, two picks this year, and very good in the running game. Along with those two, there's a great offensive line in front of them. Our defense will have their work cut out for them. When New Mexico was good, we could not compete with them. Now I expect we are better than we were a couple of years ago when we struggled against this team. Different personnel, same identity. We'll see what the results are when we take on New Mexico in week seven. Thanks for watching everybody. Please leave your feedback down below in the comment section. What did you think of today's game, the upcoming matchup, and how recruiting is going? Please drop a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification so you don't miss the next episode, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.